Hi guys, in this video we're going to ask what is a resultant force? We'll be finding resultant forces and finally a summary. So what is a resultant force? Well often we'll have lots of different forces acting on an object and it's important to work out what the overall effect of these forces is, i.e. we want to find out an overall force on the object. For example, a tennis ball falling towards the ground is clearly feeling weight due to gravity. However, we know that whenever an object is moving through air, it feels a force of air resistance, which acts in the opposite direction to the direction of motion. And our point here is that we have two different forces acting on the tennis ball in opposite directions, but they have different magnitudes. In particular, in this case, the weight is a larger force than the air resistance, so there's going to be an overall but smaller force pointing downwards and we call this overall force the resultant force. And it is this overall or resultant force that tells us exactly how an object is actually going to accelerate. And now a definition of the resultant force would be that it is a single force acting at a point that has the same overall effect as all of the individual forces that are acting at that point. Let's try and calculate a resultant force now and we'll look at a simple example where all of the forces acting on the object are along the same line but of course they might be in opposite directions. So imagine a car is driving forwards with a force of 2300 newtons. Now let's think about what other forces might be acting on this car. There's going to be a frictional force due to the wheels on the road and we can imagine that this would be about 300 newtons. And just like the tennis ball falling to the ground, the car will feel a force of air resistance of 500 newtons. Now that we've figured out all of the forces that will act on the car, let's put them all together in one diagram. We have our driving force of 2,300 newtons. We have a frictional force of 300 newtons and an air resistance force of 500 newtons. Now we can calculate the resultant force from this. We start with our largest force and we subtract the magnitudes of the other two forces since they act in the opposite direction. So the overall force is going to be the 2300 newtons minus 500 and then also minus another 300. So altogether that's a resultant force of 1500 newtons. Hey guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE Physics and Combined Science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.